Hey, it's so good to see you all here uh, tonight. We're going to have a great night ahead of some worship and a message by Jamie and just encountering God's spirit and his freedom in this place. First, we're going to kick things off in worship. So if you would stand with us as we sing to our God and declare his promises. Out of the shadow. Good evening. Gosh, it's good to be here. I had to be out of town last week. I really missed you guys. Thank you. So glad that you're here. So glad we're all here tonight. Hopefully this will be a place tonight where you can be yourself and relax and seek God. He is here. You seek him, you'll find him. Um, welcome to those who are online with us tonight, and especially if we have any newcomers tonight. It's hard to walk in those doors for the first time, but you are welcome here. This is a place where you can be loved, um, and if you'll let us know who you are, we will love you to that full extent. I, myself, am Suzanne, and I like to say I am a princess of the Most High King, and you all are princes and princesses, too. Um, I struggle with the aftermath of childhood trauma, with control, with food, uh, with grief and loss, but those things don't define me because the king defines me. Um, and 
just want to know that you are right there in that kingdom too, that he makes you his child. He adopts us into his family, and we are his children, his princes, and his princesses. So what you'll find when you come to Recovery at Powell is that we fully support all manner of recovery. It's not about us competing with anybody. And we hope that you will take care of your recovery one day at a time in ways that are healthy, where you're reaching out um, and you're in groups. Uh, we do have open share groups after worship tonight, but we have information, if you want it, about all manner of groups uh, with whom we, uh, we work. Um, that's AANA, Al Anon, OA, SAA, ACA. It sounds like government, all those acronyms. But two things you can expect here at Recovery Pal. You can expect uh, that we are going to talk about the 12 steps, the tools laid at our feet, and we're going to talk about Jesus and how those things go together because they do and they always have. Before I read tonight's scripture, I want to mention the loss of a very special family member in our Recovery Pal family. Mama Shirley Cry passed on December 4th. She went home to be with Jesus one day short of her 87th birthday. She's precious mom of our own Brad, Alicia, and Angie, and the grandmother of our own Eric, and a whole bunch of other grandkids. She was such a giver and a real model of what it means to live a life of service, and you can see that in her children and grandchildren. The service will be on Saturday following a receiving from 12 to 2 at Minot Funeral Home in Halls Chapel. Um, there'll be a procession after that in Greenwood Cemetery that's uh, for a 3 o'clock graveside service. Mama Shirley's very large family will come here for a meal that we, the Recovery at Powell community, will provide. We're expecting about 100 members of that family here on Saturday around 4 o'clock. And so... If you want to show your love to that family and honor her and her legacy and her memory, please see Kelly or Teresa uh, to let them know what you can bring for that family to enjoy on Saturday. Our scripture tonight is John 1, 1 through 5 and 10 through 14 out of the New Living Translation. In the beginning, the word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through Him. Nothing was created except through Him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. He came into the very world He created but the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. I said that earlier, right? They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. So the word became human and made his name among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. Will you pray with me? Thank you, Father, for this place, for these people, for your spirit here present in and among us. Thank you, Jesus, for Mama Shirley for her powerful story and her powerful touch and the love that just emanated from her. Thank you for her family. Thank you for the gift that she gave her family that they know now that she is right there with you, Jesus. What a gift. And I pray that you would be honored tonight so that if any person here does not know you, does not know that security of your love and your salvation, that you would draw them to you tonight and they would know that tonight. 
Thank you for the 12 steps. Thank you for um, just this, uh, this powerful thing that you've given us and this community that you've placed us in. Help us to be willing to be known so that we can be fully loved. I pray your blessing on this hour and for the moments that come afterwards in our groups that the honesty that's poured out there will be honoring of you and that we will all love each other, show grace to each other in ways that help us to grow in you. Draw us now into your special place and change our hearts as we listen tonight, as we worship you, as we praise you, as we hear your word. I just pray that you will change us and that when we leave here, we will be changed and that you will use us in this world for our good and for your glory. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. So I said 12 steps is a very important part. And so at this time, I will read the step and the biblical expression afterwards is for you to read. So if you'll join me in the 12 steps. Step one. We admitted we were powerless over our compulsive behaviors, our addictions, and our losses, that our lives had become unmanageable. And I know that nothing good lives in me. That is, in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. Romans 7, 18. Step two, we came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Come to me, all who are struggling hard carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Matthew 11, 28. Step three, we made a decision to turn our will and life over to the care of God as we understood him. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Mark 12, 30. Step four, we made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Step five, we admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. James 5, 16. Step six, we were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Step seven, we humbly asked him to remove all our shortcomings. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. James 4, 10. Step eight, we made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. Why do you see the splinter that's in your brother's or sister's eye, but don't notice the log in your own eye? Matthew 7, 3. Step nine, we made direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. When a man or a woman commits any sin against anyone else, thus breaking faith with the Lord, that person becomes guilty. Such persons will confess the sin they have done. Numbers 5, 6, and 7. Step 10. We continue to take personal inventory, and when we are wrong, promptly admit it. Just as you trusted Christ to save you, trust him too for each day's problems. Live and buy in communion with him. Colossians 2, 6. Step 11. We sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God, praying only for knowledge of his will for us and power to carry that out. Pray continually. Give thanks in every situation. Because this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, 18. Step 12. Having had a spiritual awakening as the result of these steps, we try to carry this message to others and to practice these principles in all our affairs.
Holy Spirit, teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Let's stand up and praise and worship our Heavenly Father and Jesus the Son. Let's continue to sing of what God has done for us.
rejoiced as though heaven had lost. But then Jesus arose with our freedom in hand. And that's when death was arrested and my life began. Yeah. Oh, your grace so free washes over Yes, Lord, we declare that promise and that truth here and now over our lives, over our sin, over the darkness in our hearts, over our addictions, our losses, the damage we've sustained for so many years, the damage that we've caused, the hopelessness that we hold on to, that we just can't seem to shake off, the stress that weighs us down the anxiety and the fear that looms over us, over our families and our schools and our governments, over our churches and our small groups, over our workplaces, God, everything we proclaim your victory, over everything we proclaim your truth and your grace and your love and your freedom and your healing and your justice. You are the source of every good and perfect thing. And if it's not from you, then it is neither good nor perfect. So in stating that, Lord, may we shed all those things that aren't from you. Let's figure out what they are here tonight together, God, whatever keeps clinging on to us, whatever we keep clinging on to. To call it by name, to cast it away, and to receive the freedom that you give. 
in its fullness. So Lord, come and do a mighty work in this place. Do a mighty work in our hearts. And do a mighty work through our hands here tonight, God. We love you. We welcome you in. In your name we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. You may be seated. Thank you, guys. Good evening. Sorry. My binoculars that look like glasses make me set that thing up a certain way. Um, my name is Jamie, and I'm a believer in Jesus Christ who struggles with all sorts of things. Um, addiction to pornography and other issues with sexual integrity, codependency, perfectionism, um, a crummy self-image since whenever I had one. But... Um, as Suzanne was mentioned, those things used to run my life. They literally, I didn't realize it, but there was like a loop running in the background, and they, they affected every decision I ever made and every relationship I ever had, but no more because the power of Jesus Christ is bigger than all those things, and he has set me free, not to be perfect, but not to be a slave to those things anymore. And I stand here right now very grateful and glad to be here with you. Um, <clears throat> this is an interesting time of year. Um, it can be, I remember when I was a kid, the excitement, like it seemed like it was a year and a half from Thanksgiving to Christmas. Like it just took forever to get here. Um, it goes a little bit faster now and it's not quite as exciting to be honest. Um, this can be a time of really hard and heavy sadness, um, grief and loneliness. Some of us may feel abandoned this time of year. Or sometimes we might feel used by others, run down, damaged, or broken. Many of us feel sort of hopeless um, and fear the darkness. I mean, the, the days are so short this time of year, and the nights just seem like they go on and on and on. Well, if you can relate to any of that, I just want you to know that you're not alone. But not only that, there's hope. And there is a way out. And that's what this video that we're going to show you is about. So let's watch it. Let's pray. Lord, um, the one who conquers the darkness, will you come with all your light and meet with us now? In the name of Jesus, amen. Last week, we talked about a couple named Zachariah and Elizabeth and their son named John. We know him as John the Baptist. He was the one that God used to prepare the way for Jesus. Hear these prophetic words of Zechariah, John's father, about the mission of Jesus. We find this in Luke chapter 1. Because of God's tender mercy, the morning light from heaven is about to break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide us to the path of peace. You ever feel like that? A light for those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death? 
If you don't know what that's like, I, I think that's great, but I would encourage you just keep listening because you might find some connection to your life. It happened to me Monday morning as I was working on this message. I don't know if you remember what Monday morning was like. I worked from home on my sermon prep days, and I was at the house, and it was really gloomy on Monday morning, especially early. And the little condo that we live in right now has to, to a door with some glass panels in it and one window in that room, and that's all that's there. And I got the desk sitting right in front of that window, and I got the blinds wide open, and I was like, man, something is not right. It doesn't feel right. I turned on every light I could find to turn on, every light in that room, every lamp. I turned on the lights in the kitchen to add a little bit more, and I could just, I literally could feel it. It was, it was like this heavy, gloomy sort of thing weighing on me. And then I had an idea. When we moved in the house, we noticed that um, the ceiling fan in that room didn't have any light bulbs in it. So handy man that I am, I went and got me three light bulbs and put them in there. And then what we found out is a little chain that you turn the light on off with is broken. And if you have the fan on, the light is on. And if, the, if you want the light to go off, you got to turn the fan off. We like to have the fan run all the time. And Suzanne detests those harsh lights come out of the ceiling. So she says, they got to go. So they went. Well, I went in the closet and I found them three light bulbs on Monday morning. And I put them back in that ceiling fan light. And then I was able to do what I needed to do. But, but it was really, it was weighing on me. It only took, I bet I hadn't even worked an hour when I figured I had to do something. So wherever you find yourself tonight and whatever's going on with you, know this that the path of peace is always toward the light because the light is Jesus. And that's always the direction that we want to go is toward Jesus. Suzanne read our scripture tonight from John 1. In chapter 5, it says, The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. In place of the word extinguish, I want us to look at what other translations use because there's a lot of meaning and power in that word, and it's hard to get it from just using one English word. Um, in the Greek language, what we would translate as extinguish, they would have a, a greater depth of meaning for that word. So here's what that would sound like in other translations. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness could not apprehend, comprehend, understand, grasp, master, perceive, quench, extinguish, suppress, put out, overcome, overpower, or defeat the light. Because the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never overcome it. But how many of us are in a prison with no bars, that we feel like that there's no way out of. Well, here's what I want us to think about. Even in that place, there is some light coming through. There is. If you remember that video, when he was walking around, I don't know what that was, a barn or a garage or something, but still, through the cracks in the boards, there was light. There were a couple windows up there. There was light coming in. That light for us is the experience, strength, and hope of others in recovery. The ones who have gone before us, who were in the same place that we are in now, and the ones that know the way to where we want to go, and they, have all, they are already on that way, they are already there, and they can help us get there. They are the light. But when I was watching that video, at the end when the man's coming toward the door, and the, there's little, three little windows above that door, and I could just imagine Jesus on the other side of that door, his mind-boggling radiance, his power, his love, his might, just on the other side of that door, waiting to see, is he going to open it up and let me in? In the midst of this season that we call Advent, we remember how Jesus came to us at Christmas, and we also remember that he will come again, not as a baby. He will come again. But in his first coming, his first advent, he has already unlocked the door. If we find ourselves in that prison with no bars tonight, just know this, the door is unlocked. And Jesus has given us a gift, and that gift is the power of choice which is a way to escape, 
a truth amongst the lies. Life beyond this place of darkness. And we know the way. In John 8, 12, Jesus says this, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Because the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never overcome it. We have a choice, and we know the way. But I think there is another part. How do we open that door? Even if we know it's not locked, how do we get it open? We're going to look at a, something from the 12 and 12, which is a book that's an expansion on the um, 12 steps, also written by Bill Wilson. We're going to look at the part that's about step 12, and it's a kind of a long quote, so I'm going to put some of it up on the screen so to help you digest it as we go. So here's what he says. When a man or a woman has a spiritual awakening, the most important meaning of it is that he now has become able to do feel and believe that which he could not do before on his own unaided strength and resources alone. He's been granted a gift, which amounts to a new state of consciousness and being. He has been set on a path which tells him he is really going somewhere. And now he's going to describe the place of darkness that he just left from. A path which tells him he's really going somewhere, that life is not a dead end. You ever felt like life was a dead end? Or something just to be endured or overcome? In a very real sense, he's been transformed. Now he's going to talk about the key to the door of freedom. He's been transformed because he has laid hold of a source of strength which, in one way or another, he had hitherto denied himself. In other words, there was a choice he could have made, but he wouldn't make that choice. And now comes a description of of life in the light. He finds himself in possession of a degree of honesty, tolerance, unselfishness, peace of mind, and love of which he had thought himself quite incapable. What he has received is a free gift, and yet usually, at least in some small part, he has made himself ready to receive it. AA's manner of making ready to receive this gift lies in the practice of the 12 steps in our program. Now, I never, ever want to leave you with the impression that the 12 steps are the only way to Jesus because they are not. I don't believe that. They're not the only way. However, for me and many of us here at Recovery at Powell, the 12 steps are the most effective way that we have found to enter into a relationship with Jesus and then to begin the process of laying down our lives and following him. A simple kit of spiritual tools laid at our feet that opened that door. And right behind that door is the light of Jesus. But Jesus, even with all his power and authority, he never demands. He doesn't make us follow him. He doesn't force us to follow him. But he has made that choice possible. There was a time when we couldn't choose anything but our old way of life. I bet we all remember what that is like. But because of Jesus and having a relationship with him, now we can make a different choice. And I would say the steps, especially steps four through nine, what we call the action steps, are the way that we make that choice to trust in Jesus, to depend on Jesus, to leave that prison and the darkness behind and live a life of freedom. So you guys know how I love to do the night step promises. I found something else that's a lot like that I'm going to get to do here now. Um, because I'm always amazed at how the big book explains things that I have read in the scriptures a thousand times, but now I understand it better. I understand it differently now. So here is a life described in the big book that is possible, a life that many in this room are now living, a life that is living in the light of Jesus, and it's described in different sets of promises from the big book. They're not going to be on the screen. I just want you to hear them. So whatever you need to do to put yourself in a place to hear and receive, just hear these words. This is what Jesus offers us. A life of recovery from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. A life where we can know happiness, peace, and usefulness. And a way of life that is incredibly more wonderful as time passes. A life with a sense of victory 
followed by such a peace and serenity as we have never known. A life with a design for living that actually works in rough going. A life where we find that a new power, peace, and happiness and sense of direction flows into us. A life where we enjoy peace of mind, discovering we can face life successfully, beginning to lose our fear of today and tomorrow and even the hereafter. A life where we are reborn, relying on God who enables us to match calamity with serenity. A life where we can look the world in the eye, be alone, and yet at perfect peace. A life where we begin to feel the nearness of our Creator and our fear falls from us. A life where, when we look back, we realize the things which came to us when we put ourselves in God's hands were better than anything we could ever have planned ourselves. Amen. So, to wrap up, I want us to watch the video again. Because everything I've been talking about are all the words that are, are in that video. I just want you to see it again. And as it closes, and that, that scene at the end where the man walks up to the door, I just want you to think about that Jesus is right on the other side of that door. And the freedom that we find there with him that we can access by working the steps. So let's watch it again. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never overcome it. In the name of Jesus, amen. Just stand as we declare our freedom in Jesus' name, all that he has done. As we run to his promise, run to his healing, run to his grace. And I was big. And who could carry that kind of weight? No, it was my turn till I met you. Oh, I was breathing, but not alive. Call my 
Problem with having an upbeat song after that. Well, that was good. That was perfect. Y'all can have a seat for a minute. Um, gosh, can you believe it? We're early. I don't know the last time that's happened. Um, man, it's good to be with you tonight. Just, just to be together and um, seek God together. I just know there's something special about that. I, I seek God at that desk in the in the den all the time. In my special place, like in where me and the dog sit on the couch. But it's something different, I think, when we do it together. There's a power of God's Spirit that's present with us. So thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us online. Um, thank you for those who are able to give to enable the things that happen behind the scenes to happen. Um, our Friday meal ministry to Flanagan and to Eagle's Nest and to folks who are shut in in our community and all kinds of other things and all of the things that happen on Thursday night. Um, one of the things that will happen every Thursday night is we'll have groups. Um, the room numbers will be on the screen along with the phone numbers where you can call in when you're not here so you can participate even if you're not on site. Um, as great as it is for us to be together in this group, if you've probably noticed, you've been listening, you've been shouting a little bit, but you haven't been talking about how you're doing. Um, you haven't got a chance, except in prayer at least, to express what's going on with you this week um, and where you're at and receive the hope from other people sharing that same thing with you. And that's what we do in group. Um, it's not magic, but it's powerful. So I just encourage you um, to find a group tonight. And if you don't see one or don't know how you'd fit in that, come find me, Kelly or Brad. Teresa will help you figure out where to get started in that. Um, and there's a reason that we, we went through the promises um, like we did tonight. And there's a reason that we do the night step promises every week. Um, because at least I can tell you from my perspective, when I came into recovery, the thing I needed was hope. Because, man, I was well aware of where I was at. I just didn't know if there was a way to get anywhere other than that. And when we read these promises, what we're doing is we're seeing the story of people who have gone before us. This is their testimony to us. Mama Shirley left us a testimony. It's living in her kids. I saw it. We often worked across from each other on the Friday meal table. Um, in her 80s, she still was outdoing me as we were trying to get the plates separated and the buns on the sandwiches and pull in the next thing of pulled pork. Um, it was a mighty witness. And that's what we're doing. We're In these promises, we're seeing the witnesses of the people who have gone before us and asking God to put us on that same path that they um, went on, are on, and lived into. Um, and we see this as a covenant with God. If we will do what God calls us to do by working the steps, this is what he will do in our life. We're going to know a new freedom and a new happiness. We will not regret the past nor wish to shut the door on it. We will comprehend the word serenity and we will know peace. And no matter how far down the scale we have gone, we will see how our experience can benefit others. 
that feeling of uselessness and self-pity will disappear. We will lose interest in selfish things and gain an interest in our fellows. Self-seeking will slip away. Our whole attitude and outlook upon life will change. Fear of people and economic insecurity will leave us. We will intuitively know how to handle situations which used to baffle us. We will suddenly realize that God is doing for us what we could not do for ourselves. So I ask you, Recover It, pal, are these extravagant promises? They are being fulfilled among us, sometimes quickly, sometimes, often, very slowly. But they always materialize if we work for them. Let's close with the serenity prayer. God, grant me serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference, living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did, sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right, I surrender to your will, so that I may be reasonably happy in this life, supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. And now whatever's next for you, go into that knowing this, the light shines in the darkness, and no matter what, the darkness can never overcome it so you can go in peace.